You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the auction block All right, everybody. That music means we are back for the Thursday edition of everyone's favorite bi-weekly options partay, known around the globe as the Option Block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com. Three things to remind you of at the top of the show. A, if you're not listening to the full network, what the heck are you doing? You are missing out on so much. So check out the full network. Wherever you're getting this, it's available on everything under the sun. B, if you like what you hear, wherever you're listening, whatever platform it might be, whatever they let you do, a rating, a star, a review, a comment, whatever they let you do, whatever you add into the mix does help all the algorithms point more people our way, which is a good thing in these crazy, tumultuous times. And of course, if you too feel like you're ready, you've graduated to the next level, then head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. That's the place to go to take your trading to the next level. Awesome pro q and A's coming at you every week. Options oddities at the end of the week where we detail all the madness in the world of unusual activity. Live streams, great giveaways. Congratulations to our pro member Wolfpack. Just yesterday won the October pro trading crate that is being hastily assembled and sent out the door as we speak. Still a huge mountain of things here, and that's not even everything from the vault. We have to go down and get more to bring up here to the studio. So a lot of great stuff. If you want to get access to all those goodies, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. The place to go to learn more as we go around the horn, see who's joining us on the old program today. First, let's go out to the quiet hinterlands of Chicago, where we are joined once again by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussauds from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, 
Welcome back to Ye Old OB, sir. Always happy to be here on Ye Old Options Insider Radio Network. Excited for the first show of November. Excited indeed, sir. Hope everyone has recovered from their, their candy comas from Halloween earlier in the week as we keep on rolling. I don't think they do Halloween on the shores of Maine. Instead, they still mount their lone vigil against the locusts and the clam pirates. There's no time for frivolities like trick-or-treating on the shores of Maine, where we are joined once again by the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, do you even see trick-or-treaters on your compound? Or are they too scared to come by? Uh, they're all too scared to walk down the driveway. It's a long and scary driveway. They just they avoid the compound at all costs. Can't say I blame them. Would you, as a little kid with your trick-or-treat bag, want to come up to the armed compound with the razor wire? No. Not, not a scene for the kiddies as we keep on rolling out to Sibo East. I think that's where he is. I guess we'll find out where he is. He is the flow master himself, a.k.a. Mr. Henry Schwartz, holding down the Sibo hot seat this week. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the show. Where are you beaming in from on your world tour this week? So right now I'm in Toronto, Canada, where uh, we actually have some equity exchanges up here. Uh, but I'm here for a TD Ameritrade conference uh, to talk about option activity. I thought I heard some A's and some, some hosers sneaking into your, uh, into your speech there. That explains it. You are north of the border, sir. So we'll get a Canadian perspective on options as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down what the heck is trading. And man, Powell has sent these markets into another gear to the upside. Just last week, everyone was wringing their hands. Oh, my goodness. Things look so dire. We were threatening 4,100 to the dark side. Look out below, 4,000 next stop. And after that, who knew where we were heading? Come into this week, Powell takes an uncharacteristic, a little bit of a dovish step out there, at least signaling that uh, no more for the foreseeable future on the rate hike front. And markets liking what they heard, rallying hard yesterday and continuing that rally today. S&P up 1.6%. So not only are we north of 4,100, not only are we north of 4,200, we are north of 4,300 right now, 4,305 as we're kicking off the show and about to head higher. So just a lot of optimism out there. The Dow up 1.3% and the NASDAQ up about 1.5% out there. And let's throw in our old friends, small caps as well, because they've been kind of an odd duck of late and are they enjoying the party as well? The answer is yes. Small caps up about 1.9%. So it's just a party out there on the street this week, unless you're a hardcore bear, in which case it's a rough one, or unless you're trying to catch the falling knife that is Uvix. That's another interesting one. We'll get to all that fun maybe a little bit later, certainly on Vol Views tomorrow. Uh, speaking of all things Vol, Vol just cratering post Powell. VIX was at about a 16 even when we kicked off the show. That's down a little over four, almost four and a half, about 4.4 points from where it was on the Monday show. So was there some Powell premium baked in? Yeah. And they are squeezing that out now. VIX still frothy, but well below where it was on the Monday show. We're at an 85 now, down 13 points from the Monday show. VXX 22 and a quarter, down over three, almost three and a half, about three and a third points from the Monday show, UVXY 1460 down almost four, about 3.7 points. Uh, SVIX 27 and about a third, up about three and a half points. And the infamous UVIX, my goodness, this thing <laughs> 29 and a quarter when we kicked off the show. It was threatening 45 a few days ago, listeners. So just what a beast. It's down almost 11 handles just from the Monday show. Of course, you take it from the highs it hit after that, then it's down far more. Just uh, just almost hard to come to grips with this thing out here. You just got to almost just buy the premium in whatever direction you like and then just roll the dice and hope for the best because uh, getting much else off is challenging out there, to say the least. Uh, let's go around the horn. Let's go the opposite of the way we started. Let's go out to not SIBO East, but I guess we'll call it the traveling SIBO Roadshow to the Great White North 
where we are joined by Mr. Flowmaster. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, a crazy week as Fed weeks are wont to be out there. What is catching your eye in these tumultuous markets, sir? Well, it, it's it certainly is interesting how quickly the tide can turn. Uh, we are we're up almost four uh, percent in a week, I think, in the S and P, and almost five percent in uh, the Nasdaq world. Yeah, you were pretty uh, dire yeah. on your last appearance. You thought things were looking pretty rough. <laughs> what difference a week yeah, makes? Exactly. So uh, you know, it's it's kind of a, it's a good lesson, I guess, um, that. You know, I mean, the market is, is pretty fickle. Uh, these are these are decent sized moves, so I think it's a it can be a good lesson for people to to uh, stay humble and keep your uh, keep your trades relatively at least reasonably sized. Um, the uh, I have some stats for you because I just ran October, and I have some I have a breaking news story for you, which is that. Uh, the ETF option volume in October was uh, about 20.6 million contracts a day, exceeding the single stock volume by almost 2 million contracts a day. And this is this pretty unusual for uh, kind of a non-crisis moment, right? We've seen these these things that does tend to happen when you get a big uh, kind of disruption, right? Because because traders. <laughs> flock into ETFs and indexes uh, for the liquidity, but this is a little different, and this is this really is a direct consequence of all this zero-day trading that we're seeing, uh, and I think it's probably going to stay this way. In fact, I was at a, a conference yesterday. It, it is certainly the season for conferences. I was at the SIFMA uh, Options Symposium yesterday and saw uh, Tom Sosnoff and also J.J. Kinahan speak. It, it's really interesting uh, just kind of get their get their views on the world, but uh, one of the executives from Nasdaq pointed out that they're going to be starting Wednesday weeklies in uh, five big ETFs uh, very soon. So uh, that's just going to kind of continue this. They're not moving to dailies, uh, at least not yet, but it's it's not far off. And um, actually, the uh, the head of options at Schwab, uh, which is also Ameritrade uh, now. Uh, basically kind of express his views on the short dated contracts. Uh, he's not really a fan in the single stock world, at least not yet, but he actually uh, said he, he wouldn't be surprised if we do get them. Uh, he's just kind of hoping that steps are, are incremental, which I think is what we're kind of seeing in the, in the ETFs going first. Yes, we are all moving inexorably towards midnight, listeners, which is when everything is expiring just all the time, all around us. There is no escape, no respite. From expiration. So if you like zero day, strap in. It's coming for more names and more products. <laughs> if you're not a fan, like I know a lot of you are, we see the poll numbers. It's not universal. I mean, the volume numbers speak for themselves, but when we pull our audience, it's definitely a mixed bag. Uh, well, then I guess you're you're in for some rough sledding ahead as we keep on rolling. Let's keep going. Let's roll the dice and move the dial of the clock away from midnight and down towards the shores of Maine where the Rock Lobster maintains his lone vigil. I got to imagine that vigil might be a little bit happier today because uh, those UVIX puts that he thought were garbage and worthless and he had been run over on are, are suddenly almost at the money, Mr. Rock Lobster. So you're, you're pretty excited. Uh, yes, actually, the best, the best part of this trade, you, you guys will love this. So I had this, I had this, I was long, I don't know, so I had kind of a fairly good size short VIX, short SPY position on about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, right? Uh, let's call it three, three. So I had, that's when I was kind of, I was put on a d- decent size. And, um, you know, Microsoft earnings are coming out. And I had convinced myself pretty solidly that, um, uh, that like, like kind of like in March of this year, uh, or May, right? We kind of had that end of the April earnings cycle just into May that like the big tech earnings are going to just drive the market, you know, back up again. So I closed, I, I can't even tell you how many because it's too embarrassing. So I closed my spy put spreads that I had against like UVIX and VIX, some VIX puts and stuff and several products. So I closed them and I'm like, okay. Because we're going to have this big rally, and then all my VIX is going to kill it. And I'm just going to take my like I basically was probably up about fifty to sixty cents per spy put spread, um, and I rolled into VIX call spreads because like well if it gets bad, you know this Middle East thing blowing up, we could go to thirty. Like so, it's either thirty or you know or not. And then uh, so what happened? Um, <laughs> and just the 
the SPY basically dropped, I don't know, SPX dropped 200 points, the SPY dropped 20 points in basically a vault, like vault didn't change really at all. It just stayed at 20 for the most part for two straight weeks when SPY went down. So my huge genius position management idea made nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. So I watched my SPY call spreads very dutifully uh, decay to nothing during <laughs> the two weeks. Um, and I watched my VIX puts get annihilated and I watched the value of the SPY put spreads that I no longer owned uh, basically go from two and a half bucks to between six and $10 each. <laughs> and I, I had a substantial amount of them. Uh, so I just watched all the money I didn't make. Uh, and my grand idea uh, sadly did not pan out. However, today <laughs> I'm able to close every position at a slight profit because uh, except for the UVIX puts, I had not that yet. Um, but I'm almost there. Uh, so now the cycle will be profitable. However, I probably missed the trading opportunity uh, for myself for the year um, in that. So um, but sometimes, you know, if you got a hot idea and you want to go all in, you you can. It's your prerogative, but you also have to eat the bitter fruit <laughs> of uh, being incorrect. I think we're all eating some bitter fruit right now. Hey, I, I had a bitter chance. Fruit. I had that UVIX put fly. I could have taken off the short leg like I like to do for like a dime, you know, just a few days ago. And, you know, as you, I looked at it, so I should probably do that. And I got busy. And now UVIX has just blown. Oh, you didn't blown, take it off? <laughs> blown through every goddamn strike. Before I could even hit a button, it is it is ridiculous. You're gonna make nothing, and you'll run right through. The yeah, top exactly. So I'll, I'll I'll do all right on it, but nowhere near what it could have been. I could have had two long downside legs that are now uh, several multiple handles in the money. Uh, yeah, yes. it's just it would have been quite the do, as they say. And instead, you know, I got busy. My listeners, I love my listeners. I devote my time to them. And so, yeah, you're not you're not alone, Mr. Rock Lobster. That, so, you, that, so you, too, are eating the bitter fruit of what could have been a fine. Cycle. It's the worst when you're right and yet still wrong. That, that's the worst part of it. <laughs> that's just oh, that's it's killing me. It's killing me right now. Uh, but I'll yes. get to that. So, more. Yeah, that, on that's Bob my years. story. That is my story. I see how nice I am. I share my pain with you. So you're not you're not the only yeah. one. I don't just laugh at your misfortune. I try to mitigate it sometimes. Uh, so. I, I appreciate that. I, I'll tell you what, the UVIX fly is definitely the only way to trade that is you put the fly on thinking, okay, if you do get some wild rip, you'll be able to close the shorts because it's such a beast of a product. Yeah, it's very That's normally the way I would plan. do it. And that's how I was planning to do it. And like an idiot, I got busy and then all the, the bell rang and it was too late. And then that was it. That was the moment, you know. And it never looked back. <laughs> I, I, think, I think you have to enlist uh, the youngest Longo to close your uh, short contracts for Yeah, him. I might. You gotta, He's it, busy with this thing know, called during school. school. Put him you on know? his phone. Yeah. Put him on the I'll phone. Say, I'm sure they'll mind that in school, right? Hey, I'm closing my dad's short, short put positions. <laughs> 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 no detention for me, teacher. I'm, I'm doing God's work here. Closing yes. the short. Just, just the short leg of the fly, teacher. That's all I need to watch out for. Yeah, so just, yeah, just give me a minute, teacher. I'll be done. I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> it's actually a very modern excuse. I would, I would be, I would be wondering what the teacher would say to that if they did hear that. Uh, okay, you know they probably would be confused. But yes, yeah, so yeah, there's there's pain and fun to be had all along, listeners. I knew when I got filled on that thing that I was like, this is kind of an aberrant fill. It's probably going to be hard to take off. I'm going to have to piecemeal it, and uh, we'll we'll regale the full saga probably tomorrow on Volviews, listeners. But instead, let's keep on rolling. Let's let's wash away all this negativity and all this curmudgeonness going on out here. Let's go out to the land of sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and happy puppy dogs. Yes, St. Charles. Uncle Mike, like Calgon, sir, take it away. Take away the pain, sir. Make us all happy. Well, I'll start with, uh, you had mentioned uh, having your son close the puts on his phone in school. So <clears throat> in the early 2000s, uh, when I was first learning about option trading 20 years ago, good gosh, now I'm making myself feel old. Um, I, I was working as a substitute teacher while I was, when I got cut from the bills and was waiting for another phone call from the NFL that didn't come, I worked as a substitute teacher to pay the bills. And so, uh, one thing that I would do when I was 
uh, learning about options is at the time I weighed over 300 pounds. And so I don't know if anyone's ever substitute taught before, but you have to be a jerk to the kids or you're going to get walked on. That's just a fact of life. And so I would stand up in front of classes at the beginning of class. You will be quiet. You will not do work. I mean, and I'm not exaggerating either. And so then I would have uh, 48 minutes of silence. And so that's when I learned about option trading. And so eventually, as I started doing it more, I would trade while I was sitting there supervising the kids. And uh, I eventually got in trouble for it. And so uh, teachers did not like the idea of me trading on their computers because that was before the days of handheld devices or anything like that. So I would just trade on the school computers. And then um, eventually they tr they somehow shut down my brokerage account. So I would go to, um, I think, CBOE.com and get delayed quotes and call people. And it was quite the, it was quite the ordeal. But um, I'm guessing that the teachers would not look too kindly on your son trading while he's in class, just at least based on my experience 20 years ago in a totally different time and situation. I like the idea of angry sub Uncle Mike. That would be sound. It's fun to see just you yelling at a room full of kids. It'd be pretty funny. I can't picture it, sir. I, I'm just hey. saying that has to be a new wrestling character. Angry <laughs> sub Mike. Yeah, angry That's sub. Ooh, Mike. I, I like that. I like it. What would your finisher uh, be? The the ruler breaker. You break a ruler on somebody. I was in the public schools. Couldn't do that there. All right. So anyway, in these markets, um, and they're they're going up. And so um, today, if you ain't long, you're wrong. And um, you know, there's a couple of things I'm seeing is that I, I think that just the fact that I, I wouldn't call the Fed comments necessarily definitive saying we are done or we're going to lower rates now. I I didn't get that feel from it. But just anything, just a little bit to the dovish side and the markets went crazy, which they're doing right now. And so that's what I'm seeing is this is just a reaction to just some type of something uh, from the, it, the Fed threw the market a bone, so to speak. Not a very big bone, but it did throw the market somewhat of a bone on this one. Now, in terms of the bond markets, we are getting a little bit of a rally. So just in looking at the 10-year note, uh, we are getting a little bit of a rally. So uh, the lows yesterday, uh, I'm just looking at IEF as an example, uh, tracking the 7- to 10-year treasuries. Uh, we are at 89.49 at, at the lows, and or I'm sorry, 89.56 at the lows. Uh, and then now, uh, today, we actually did get up to 91.22, but we're back down to 90.75. So we have had a little bit of a rally in bonds, but this is just kind of something to where it's a little bit of a, oh, th it seems like it's more of a relief rally into a thank God they really aren't going to raise rates anymore rally for now, but it's not a, a ding dong, the witch is dead rally uh, by any means in the bond area. So uh, in looking at it, I think it's good for markets that obviously it's good for markets that uh, the Fed seems to be slowing down a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it was necessary, if it was really necessary to go this high with rates. Other people may or may not agree with me on that, but we'll see where we go at the next Fed meeting. But for the time being, uh, we have a little bit of relief in store. Uh, a couple of names that are catching my eye today. Uh, we had said earlier in the week that's hard for the market to have an up day when Apple's down. Well, we don't have that problem today. Apple's up over three dollars on the day today. Uh, Microsoft is uh, knocking on the door of three fifty again, and so it's just kind of been in that range, like between the three twenty three fifty level for a little while now. So we we are getting some movement in, the, in Microsoft land, if you will. And then from a sector standpoint, or I'm sorry, the other name that's that's catching my eye, and I guess you could say this in sectors as well, but um, J.P. Morgan, uh, it's back above the 140 level, so we're getting a little bit of a rally in the banks as well. Uh, so in terms of the sectors, of course, just to kind of add to that, XLF, the financial sector, that's up almost 2% on the day. And um, looking at technology, uh, technology is up, but it's uh, it's it's just up. It's not way up by any means. Uh, technology is up about one and a half percent on the day, uh, looking at XLK. And so it is up, but to say that it is up a major level would not be uh, quite accurate. The thing that is up uh, in a pretty good fashion for the bulls today would be energy. 
And looking at that, looking at XLE, that's up over $2 on the day. And uh, with that being up uh, well north of 2%, that's something that's significant because of the fact that um, we don't usually get major oil rally, or I'm sorry, major energy rallies like that uh, by comparison to technologies on days when the market itself is up roughly 70 points in the S&P 500. So I guess just to sum it up, everything is awesome. Everything is awesome indeed. Let's see if things are awesome from a macro or indeed a micro or perhaps both perspective out there in the old options markets today. If you're looking at VIX solely through the lens of volatility volume, then you might not think today is, is super awesome. It's certainly decent. It's certainly impressive. Not blowing the doors off. We're not threatening a million contracts or anything like that, but we're closing on a half a million, so nothing to sneeze at out there. 466,000 contracts on the tape right now. The ADV, a little bit shy of 900K, 890, so coming in a little bit over the last week and change, but still looking pretty robust. Uh, speaking of robust, SPY closing in on 6 million contracts right now, so 5.85 million, so SPY's not playing around. The ADV out there is 94 Seems like that's going to go up after today's numbers. Uh, the S, similar deal, 2.32 million contracts on the tape right now in the S. Man, this is, this is some paper for the SPX. That's a lot of, that's a lot of zero days going up, listeners. Uh, the ADV is 3.5 million, and seems like they're going to hit that today as well. My goodness. Uh, small caps, not to be forgotten, 1.1 million. Get this, listeners. The ADV right now in small caps, IWM. 1.7 million contracts. We were just talking not too long ago about how 1 million was a lot for small caps, and that seemed unsustainable from an ADV perspective. And it was. They fell away from it pretty hard. And now in this new paradigm, they're closing in on 2 million contracts a day in IWM. That's a lot of paper. And not to be outdone, we've got the Qs, 2.7 million. The ADV, 4.31 million out there. Uh, let's let's fire up the old Flowmaster machine, see what's the most active, our top 10 most active out there today, listeners. And is it a day that the single names have been forgotten? The answer is no, which may surprise you given the numbers that is talked about for the SPX and SPY and even small caps and the Qs. But today is not a day where we're putting up 140,000 contracts to break into the top 10. No, 279,000. That's what it costs you to break into the top 10. So that is certainly respectable especially compared to what we've been seeing out there of late. And that also, interestingly enough, brings us to a name I was just joking about, just I think maybe even on the last show, about how we haven't seen this name in the top 10 in forever. It's Roku. They're back, listeners, at the number 10 spot, 279,000. Roku, my goodness, it seems like uh, the market waking up again to the joys of streaming and set-top boxes and all that fun. <laughs> Roku up 19 handles right now. We're 32% trading 78 and three quarters. So, yeah, their numbers, pretty good. I guess a lot of streaming going on. I guess they've also improved their ad revenue picture. So, yeah, from a name that it seemed like time had forgotten, certainly our options top 10 had forgotten it to all of a sudden... Uh, a monster. Are we going to start seeing Roku on our top tens again? I don't know. Today is certainly an indicator that it is on the rampage, followed closely by our number nine. It's good old softy, 347 and about a half, up about a buck and a half, or about half a percent today. It's had about almost exactly a $4 range, about 344.77 on the dark side, 348.80 on the light side there, so 403 to be precise, uh, hanging out uh, right towards the upper end of that 347 and about a half right now. Good for 288,000 contracts and the number nine spot. Number eight, keeping it in the M tech names. It is meta 299,000 contracts, a uh, 308 90 right now, actually off about three bucks. So meta getting a little bit of a hit out there. Uh, now more, looks like more back and forth between Mark Zuckerberg and Musk <laughs> over some nonsense out here. Who knows? Are they going to fight? Is it some name thing? Who knows? A lot of drama when both of those two are involved. But the stock taking a hit today, good for the number eight spot. Number seven, another name we haven't talked about in quite some time. That's what earnings season does, listeners. It brings back old names and pops them back into our consciousness again. Number seven is PayPal, 300K. Is the turnaround in in PayPal? That's what some folks might be wondering after they blew the doors off their earnings as well. 5480 is where PayPal is trading right now, up $3 and 
13 cents or about exactly 6% out there. So a banger day for PayPal at the number seven spot. A number six, the Amazonians, 484,000 contracts, 137.34, up 34 cents. So kind of a bit of a rounding error right now. They've had a little over two, about $2.40 range, pretty close to it. Uh, they're about 138.80 or so and about 136.40 on the dark side today so hanging out in the middle to upper band of that range right now and good for the number six spot keeping it in the a tech names listeners we go out next to good old amd listeners so the chip zone coming pretty much right where we expect it in the six to four range and that's where we're hitting today amd number five five hundred forty four thousand contracts and AMD right now, 108.11, up about not even a dime. So kind of an unched right now. On the day, it got as low as 105.91, as high as 109.40. So vacillating in the middle, upper portion of that range right now. And again, good for number five, 544,000 contracts. Number four, the return of an AI Titan, perhaps. This one was starting uh, to dip, got below 15 handles, bouncing around 14 and change. This is, of course, Palantir, number four, 654,000 contracts uh, rocketing north today after blowing the doors off their numbers as well. Trading 1796 up $3, pretty much exactly, or about 20, almost 21%. So we're seeing a theme here, explosive upside. We were saying a lot of names seemed like they were pricing in a lot of extra juice this cycle. And given some of these numbers we're seeing, it does appear to be merited, listeners. Palantir, number four, 600. And 54,000 contracts on the tape. And now we go to number three. It's the other half of the chip zone or the bleeding edge of the AI spare. Call it what you will. It's NVIDIA. 433, 43. That's a lot of threes in there, listeners. Up $10.18 right now. Almost 2.5%. It's had a range of 428.94 on the dark side. 435.90 on the upside. So a relatively modest range for NVIDIA these days. We've seen it whip around all over the place intraday. And again, good for number three. 694,000 contracts. Number two, looking kind of old school again. Number two and number one, listeners. Apple, back to its usual perch right there at the silver place on the podium. It's the fruit company, number two, 877,000 contracts. Apple, back north of the 170 handles. Back, it was in the 160 range, not too long ago, 167 and change last Friday. 177 and a quarter Today, so up about exactly 10 handles over the past week and about $3.30 today, nearly 2%, 177 and a quarter again, where it's hanging out right now. Good for number two, 877,000 contracts. And that means the number one spot, you know what it is, listeners. It's Tesla, 1.8 million. So Tesla putting up some numbers today, back north of the 200 level with a vengeance, 217. Pretty much even out there, up $11.40 or 5.5%. So just... Shooting to the moon like everything else. Good for 1.8 million out there. Since we're talking numbers, Mr. Flowmass, before we get to the odd block, you were just talking about the numbers for the month. Well, they are in officially, not just ETF numbers, uh, but everything in our hot little hands from our friends over there at OCC. Was October, a.k.a. Rocktober, was it uh, the banger month people expect? Did it live up to its moniker? The answer is pretty much, pretty close to it. Total volume for the month of October, listeners, 988.3 million contracts, listeners. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's just a, just a whiff away from the 1B level. So we didn't quite get there, but pretty darn close. So I'll, I'll have to go crunch the numbers. I think that puts it somewhere around number three, I think, for most active all-time months. But I'll have to go check that, maybe four. Uh, but it's in that range, listeners. Year-to-date ADV also looking robust, 44.4 million contracts through the end of October. So that is nothing to sneeze at. Some interesting highlights and perhaps lowlights. If you were looking for single-name equity options to light it up, uh, you would be disappointed. They were down 9.1% from October of last year. That's kind of interesting. ETF options, as the Flowmaster alluded to, up 25.6%. So wait till we get those dailies and <laughs> a lot more ETFs. Let's see those numbers explode. Uh, index options, speaking of dailies, man, carried on the back of zero DTE. Index options blowing the doors off up 32.5% from this time last year. So there were 76 million index options changing hands last year, 100, almost 101 million this year. And the lion's share of that, listeners, going the way of the dodo in a single day. 
Uh, let's see. Total volume obviously up up about 8.4% from this time last year. We were at 905 last year. And- well, we had 988.3 million this year for total volume. Even futures, usually a dark spot on the menu here, blowing the doors off. VIX futures up 48.6%. My goodness, 4.3 million futures change of hands last year, 6.4 million this year. Mr. Flowmaster, that is a boatload of paper to unpack. You already told us your thoughts on the ETF options. Anything else standing out for you? as you're crunching the numbers here for the uh, wild rocktober sir so you were right it was one of the busier months i think it may come out to be about the sixth or seventh busiest but i i like the months where you know the volumes above average but not a record but then you dig into it and that and as i said you know record etf option volume record index option volume so kind of under the hood there's a lot going on uh, it really is dominated by the zero day, although also, you know, as, as you said, VIX option volume has been really strong. Uh, so, you know, that and that that could be a little bit seasonal. Right. We, we tend to see the hedgers uh, wake up into the last quarter of the year, especially if, if the market's up, you know, and hopefully they've they've outperformed the S&P. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, overall, just just some really interesting times. It, it is. Um, again, I'm kind of astounded by how quickly we, we jumped right back into kind of a, an aggressive risk on type of uh, scenario and, you know, kind of where almost everything is up, um, you know, and that, that kind of plays into that DSPX dispersion index that I, I mentioned, I think, last time, which to me is really interesting because it, it shows you what the market's expectations are for are all stocks going to go up or are all stocks going to go down together? Or are we going to see a kind of a stock pickers um, type of dynamic? And today, you know, it feels like one of those days where like, okay, everything's getting lifted uh, because, you know, we've, we've had a pretty strong shift in sentiment. And I, I agree. I'm not too sure uh, if this is going to stick. I think there's still a lot of headwinds and, um, you know, there's still plenty of people calling for, uh, you know, the soft landing to be a little bit rougher. And then we have, you know, we have some global and, and macroeconomic things to be worried about. But, uh, you know, for today, it, it is certainly a bullish day. And I checked, I was right, October the third busiest month we have cooking here with uh, March 1.06, roughly, taking the top spot, August right behind it, 1.02 billion. And then October slotting in at number three, 988 million worth of contract list. So that's nothing to sneeze at. Let's see if we can also find some fun here in the odd block because it's time to get to it, listeners. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by the optionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. All right, everybody, time to get weird, time to get wild, time to unleash the great white north version of the Flowmaster with some A's and a Molson in hand to see what he's spotting out there. I'm offending all of our Canadians. I know quite a few Canadians, listeners, so I'm allowed to make those jokes. Uh, But uh, let's keep on rolling here. One of the first names he spotted is actually one that came across our radar today as well, so we'll kick things off there. This is Synovus Energy. You know this one, listeners, ticker symbol CAVE, C-V-E. We have talked about it recently and again appropriate he's up in canada and he's talking about a canadian oil sands company here uh 1944 is where he's trading right now up about 44 cents on the day on the year let's see a year ago was trading 20 and about a third so actually off nearly a buck on the year the low came 15 actually 1497 that was back on may 3rd so since then they have rallied it got back up recently to 21 and change on october 19th before selling off back to where it is right now, right in the 19 range after a nice little pop today as well. So it was flirting right around 19 yesterday. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, what did you spot out there in everyone's favorite Canadian oil name, Cave? Uh, so, yeah, I, I swear it's not it was not picked intentionally because I'm in Canada, but uh, it was one of the most kind of distinct signatures we saw today. Uh, this was a block of 10,000 of the D 21 calls bought on the Amex uh 
just before noon Eastern time. Uh, they paid 39 cents. So, uh, you know, we're talking about a $390,000 hunk of premium. Stock was 1959 at the time, and it is opening. So this is just one. And it did had, it had earnings this morning. So, um, you know, the, the, the whole energy sector is interesting, right? Because it, it got a boost when oil went higher because of concern about the Middle East. And you know, that hasn't really traded. And now it almost feels like it's, uh, it's kind of continuing a little bit higher. Uh, just based on the entire kind of lift of the market, uh, at least in the last few days. So um, just a nice 10,000 lot, uh, you know, big, much bigger than average size in that name uh, opening. Uh, and, um, you know, I mean, it's got a little bit of time on it, December, about two months until these things expire. Uh, but, you know, for them to break even, uh, we need what about a, uh, a lift of about 10 percent in the stock. Mr. Rock Lobster, we talked about Cave before. Now we're back on the trail, this time to the upside, a whopping 10,000 lot, nice and straightforward, sir, of the Dees, what were they, the Dees, Dees 21s for 39 cents, sir. What say you? Yes, I believe we looked at those in um, in Delta Strike. Mark actually did a little piggyback on this one. He liked this one. Um Relatively low cost options, although we did we did have some calls die a sad death the last time. Um, but uh, I, he liked these, so we look like they're call buyers, and we're trying to uh, go on a little jump uh, with these. So uh, I don't know if it's a you know it's like energy stocks are hard, especially you know they kind of they every they they have that huge gasp up and then they just kind of stop moving um so maybe uh you know maybe this will uh maybe this one will pay but um yeah, I thought that was it was intriguing paper nonetheless pretty pretty bullish uh, I would say pretty bullish paper pretty bullish indeed listeners as we keep on rolling out into our next name this name's looking pretty bullish today we were just talking about it it's back on our radar yet again listeners it is roku this one was such a hot name a few years ago it was a frequent offender in the top 10 every episode and then it kind of went away and now who knows is it back is it just a fleeting thing we shall see either way up 30 percent today we just talked about that on the year it's kind of been a topsy-turvy year for roku a year ago was trading 54 dollars uh, then they crushed it down to the low for the year of 38 and a quarter. That was in December. And then all the way up, and it shot up again in July. It looks like it did a similar pop. It went from $68 on July 27th to 98.44. So another 30 handle freaking pop. My goodness, Roku can pop on earnings. And then it gave, looks like most of that back. They crushed it all the way down to below that. Actually, they gave all of it back and then some. It was $68 when it had the pop back in July up to nearly 100 then they crushed it back down to 56.35 that's where it was going into earnings and then just uh rallying at heart so roku has popped a few times this year will this be the one that sticks i guess we shall find out in the meantime mr Flowmaster, sir what did you spot out there in the return of an old favorite roku sir well this one is is notable because it's a it certainly blew through the straddle although you know you look back at it i mean for, for the fact that it's got a couple of uh, double digit moves, uh, you know, including that big one that you talked about from July. And the, str- the straddle was only pricing in 12% yesterday. Uh, maybe somebody looked at it and said that, you know, that seemed pretty cheap. Um, I got to say, I had a Roku TV and it broke. So now I'm no longer a Roku person, but I did, I did kind of love the, I love the interface. Uh, what we saw in there was the largest trade in Roku yesterday ahead of earnings. Uh, and it was a simple vertical call spread. It was a thousand lot buyer of the Jan 6080 call spread. Uh, it was tied to stock. So it was tied to stock at 58.84, possibly uh, somebody rolling out of stock or possibly somebody just including the stock to minimize the impact. Uh, they paid 535 for that a thousand times. And it uh, looks today like it's worth about 17 bucks with the stock up here. And it's in January. So they, they still have three months on these, uh, which gives them, uh, you know, a lot of gamma uh, to play around with if they don't if they don't just want to get right out of it. So just a nice big double opening call spread in, in Roku right into earnings that, that did very well. There you go, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster. The return of Roku. Is it here to stay? I don't know. What are your thoughts on on this upside, sir? This vertical. 
Um, it's kind of a weird one. I, I agree with Henry. Like we have Roku and then I have, I always, then we, we use it and then it somehow it doesn't work. And then it's kind of a pain in the butt. And I don't know. Um, then we get the wrong thing and it doesn't work. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but you know, the difference is, is wasn't Roku like a $300 stock at one point. Um, and now it's 50, it was at 58 bucks. So the, uh, the call spread is, uh, you know, I, maybe they, maybe they think something uh, beautiful is going to happen. Um, it, oh, it looks like uh, all the detail, hundred percent winner with shares of 30%. So, um, I guess if they're, uh, you know, the trade's already won, um, but it's not my, Roku is not my favorite. I n- never understood, like, the uh, the hype behind it personally, but, you know, I guess it's kind of TV without spending a lot of money on TV. I, I, don't, I don't know, but uh, I guess if this is, uh, the trade worked, it worked. What else, what else are you going to say on that? What else are you going to say indeed, sir, as we keep on rolling into another name on the Flow Masters radar? This is Affirm Holdings, ticker symbol AFRM. Uh, This is kind of an alternative to credit cards, kind of a bit of a layaway, buy now, pay it later uh, service out here, trading $20.66, up 3 bucks or 17.3%. So clearly they had a banger day as well. The latest of names to partner with Amazon. <laughs> How well did it work out for some of the other names? I don't know. We're still waiting, I think, for, for Peloton to show the goods. But uh, intriguing stuff, nonetheless, up a little over 3 bucks or 17.5% today on the year. Let's see, a year ago, a firm was not that far from where it is right now, 1760. So today's lift pretty much elevated them from a an unched year, pretty much, because they were hanging out at 17 bucks again. So it was kind of a wasted year. They crushed it down to nine, actually 862 in December of last year. Then they rallied it all the way up to 2563 on September 19th. And then they had crushed it right back down to 17 bucks, actually 1693. So it was actually down slightly on the year until this latest news with Amazon came around and lifted them back up to uh, an up year. But other than that, listeners, intriguing stuff. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, what are you spotting out there in a firm, sir? So, yeah, this is an interesting one. The first thing that I saw was a whole bunch of little calls that expire tomorrow being bought for uh, six through nine cents. This was the the November third, which is tomorrow. Twenty two strike calls. Uh, they were buying those kind of around the middle of the day, eleven, you know, between eleven and one p.m. Uh, or about four or five thousand, but they do look opening, which to me is uh, a little funky. Uh, but and then I dug a little bit deeper, and actually I see one trade that's. Um, might explain it. So the the one of the meteor trades today was actually a seller of about five thousand of the April seventeen and a half puts for three ten. Okay, so um, that stock was around twenty dollars at the time, like at eleven. That looks like it closes, and I can see the opening block was just a couple weeks ago uh, when they paid around three fifty to uh, to three sixty. Stock was about a buck lower. So I think they may be kind of crying uncle on the put position for uh whatever reason and possibly taking a flyer on on these little calls i don't know um you know six seven eight cent calls are kind of funky you know we we, we talk about all these zero day uh, or very short dated trades and you know you certainly get, can get a lot of contracts for you know you know a low dollar price it doesn't look like the the wisest trade to me but but you never know you never know indeed and we are kind of coming up against it let's get to your uh, your final one now listen this is actually a name we just talked about on the monday show as well listeners so it may sound familiar to you this is toast inc and at the time, we talked about it, some very, uh, some very near dated. They were on the Monday show. It was the 15 puts in Toast Inc., ticker symbol TOST listeners, expiring on the 10th. Nearly 13,000 of them going up. Paper lifting the offer on those. Worth noting, they do have earnings coming up on the 7th, so maybe a bit of an earnings hedge going on there. Uh, really quickly, Toast right now, 1716, up about a buck today, so a good day for them. On the year, kind of a different story. They're down. About 14% of the year. They were trading $20 even a year ago. They got up to a high of 26, almost actually 27 even on July 18th. So they are down $10 from that high. 
as well. And Mr. Rock, excuse me, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what did you spot out here in our new favorite Toast Inc., sir? So, yeah, this is a funky one. It's a, it's a, I think they make restaurant software, and I think it's, it's a name that's shown up in Kathy Wood's uh, ARC portfolio, which gets a lot of press because, uh, you know, she's, she's a visionary in kind of the tech, tech world. Uh, you know, I think it only IPO'd last December, so it hasn't been around very long. But we saw a buyer of 2700 of the November 3rd, so that's tomorrow. Uh, 17 strike calls for $0.35. Cents. Now, they bought these stock was at 1693 Stock's at 1718 right now. Uh, so they may be... They may be getting out of a little bit of it, uh, but this one, you know, like today, I, you know, I, I saw one data point uh, that that I'm kind of connecting to the the move this week. Of course, too late because I could gripe with you about the trades I should have done, uh, but there was notice about hedge funds being kind of at the upper end of their leverage, and that actually what that actually means is that they're leaning short when you see that. So uh, this was mentioned at RMC by Mandy Zhu, who's our uh, macro strategist, and uh, this could be kind of a pretty broad um, – you know, short covering dynamic as well. So, uh, you know, if toast is kind of gets sucked into that, you could easily see it, you know, run another okay. another 50 cents or a dollar, uh, especially because it's kind of a name that's got some press. So uh, just a you know, buyer of, of almost 3000 of these 17 strike calls. They're they're at the money. They're a little bit in the money right now. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking right now. They clearly haven't gotten out of all of them. They traded the 2,783 this morning, and then only another 600 or so have traded on the day. So if they are getting out of them, uh, they're doing so slowly, and they're waiting for maybe another pop tomorrow. Uh, so we shall see, listeners. Maybe we'll pay some of these off on options oddities tomorrow. We shall see as we keep on rolling. We're already coming up against it, listeners. No time for the mail. We got to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's go around the block, see what everybody is keeping an eye on until our next episode. We, of course, had the Fed on our radar this week. That is now in the rearview mirror. So what's looming ahead? Only one way to find out. Let's go around the block. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what is catching your eye out there until our next episode on Monday? I believe I am not unmuted. Um, you know what I thought was kind of it? Well, the rally was so hard today that volatility at the money did not go down. So if if the market can somehow uh, hold hold this rally, um, I think you could see another leg down in uh, in volatility because you're they basically dragged the vol straight up. So. Uh, interesting that you didn't get that, uh, even though VIX is down. Um, so I, I think, uh, but I think what really drove the out, I'm looking for more earnings. You know, you got Apple earnings coming out, uh, but all the earnings, even even uh, Portillo's earnings were pretty good. Uh, Qualcomm, there's a lot of them today. PayPal. So, you know, maybe it's just, hey, Earnings are a little bit better than people thought. And, hey, that's the best reason for stocks to rally after all. And, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until your next appearance on Thursday, sir? Uh, well, we, we have a lot of, a lot of earnings in, in the Big East, so uh, that's going to keep things busy. But I guess I'm going to be watching for what kind of follow-through we see uh, after this, this, this move, which I think did surprise a lot of people. Um, and just continuing to to refine the tools that we have at at SIBO in data and access that that news feed is coming along it's very cool you you will get an early look at it Mark. all right everybody that music means we have come to the end of our sojourn through the land of the old ob but fear not faithful listeners we are not done today not by a long shot we'll be back in a little bit with one dan the man grams to break down all the action going on in the world of futures options over there at cme you know where to go to check out those reports listeners but before we do that and of course all you folks on the live side just hang out we'll be back in a little bit with that show live everybody listening on demand it'll be hitting your ear holes a little bit later on the podcast network but before we go let's go around the horn Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, where should folks go if they want more Rock Lobster goodness in their lives? Yeah, go to optionpit.com uh, to any of the products that I run. And if you want to learn how to make money trading this here volatility, this is that is the place to go. Uh, so hopefully, even when you have a, a bad idea, if you can make a couple bucks out of it, it becomes a good idea. <laughs> 
There you go. Optionpit.com. And Mr. Flowmaster, you mentioned the news feed, all the other cool stuff. Where should folks go if they want access to all those goodies, sir? SIBO.com slash RMA, and you can always request a trial, and the, the newsfeed specs will show up there soon. They're not quite there yet. All right, listeners, and you know where to go if you want more Uncle Mike goodness in your lives. Only one place to go, stcharleswealth.com, the place to go. Give him a follow on Twitter as well, at Mike Tussaw, T-O-S-A-W, at Mike Tussaw on Twitter. Give him a follow. You're going to like what you see out there. That is going to do it for us here on the old OB Back again in a little bit for this week in Futures Options, then back again tomorrow, breaking down all the mad week from an overall volatility perspective on volatility views. Then back again for your pro folks after that for Options Oddities. Then we all take a nice break, recharge for the weekend, and we're back again on Monday, another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. <laughs>